going through these parts, I've already made at least two vehicles complete, you know, and so I'm like, that's that's why I, some of this stuff that there's a couple parts that I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is for such and such. And I'm looking things up as I'm going. And I'm like, I think I'm going to keep some of these. Because there was a few times in the last couple of years, I found these piles of parts for like, you know, 10 bucks for the whole box. And I bought them all just because I'm like, I look in the box real quick and go, I know I need those two parts, you know. And I pulled out the two parts I needed to make some vehicle complete. And then I just left the box thinking I was go through it later. And now it's later. I'm finding them and going, oh, yeah, I forgot to go through all these, you know. Hey, oh, good hi. afternoon, we everybody. Hey, we went live. <laughs> we, well, you know, um, John was telling a story about all these parts he found to complete G.I. Joe vehicles and stuff. And I would have stopped him, but the power of his beard just, you know, it compelled me to let him finish his story. Yeah, there you go. So... Uh, welcome everybody. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Um, haven't been live in ages, it, it seems. In fact, I think the last time I was, it was a big, big purchase at like Ross or something. Um, but I just wanted to come out, check on with everybody, and chat with with some of my favorite people, including Mister Super Awesome Geek Show himself, John, who's here with us. Hello, um, hey, hey. everybody's welcome. Uh, there's a link at the top of the YouTube page um, that you can go to, or I will drop one in the this comments. I don't know if this will go to like, uh, we're doing it on Facebook, YouTube, and um, X. So we'll see. Uh, I'm not sure how that works on all those other things. So, um, but how you been, John? It's been all right, been all right, you? Not bad. You had a good yeah. weekend at the sale. Well, yeah, I heard you sold quite a bit of stuff. Yeah, sold a lot of stuff, made some space. Now I just need to rearrange things so that I can take advantage of that space. Uh, in yeah. Here and uh, then decide if I'm going to do it again in September. So um, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll see. I definitely have enough stuff, but it was, it was a, a big pain to do it. Thankfully, I had a buddy come out and help me, or I wouldn't have been able to do it myself. Yeah. But. I remember doing some of the shows when I was in Seattle, and just having to be there all day wore me out, regardless of if I was selling well, stuff. Well, you're standing on concrete, so it hurts yeah. your feet and it hurts your back. And, yeah. you know, um, Every time I would go to to sit down to do something, somebody else would come up and want to buy something. So then I'd have yeah, to and then you're standing greet up everybody again and moving and, around. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Orlando, how you doing? Hey, Orlando. Hey, hey. Bazer. Baz, I love. I still his his little picture thing is always cool. White monkey. White monkey. Um, it went really well. I made enough to uh, pay my mortgage for about four months, uh, maybe maybe five. So um, that's very helpful. So, Mr. Mikey in Houston, what's hey, Mikey. up? Mikey, Vader's girl, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was worth it. I, I, it, uh. I made made my money back from um, from buying this stuff, and then you know it's uh, uh, made my made a good profit. So, and in the end, one of my local comic book shops bought everything I had left, so I didn't actually have to drag anything home. So that's that made me very happy. Yeah. Because um, I had to rent a little U-Haul van to get it out there, and then. Because it was going to take me, it had taken me like eight trips if I had. So <laughs> rent, that that was pretty good. Except they, they tried to charge me for not returning the dolly, which I did. And they're like, oh, that's going to be 120 bucks. I was like, uh, but you sell it over there for 59. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Plus it's right there. Oh, okay. So they gave me a return easily enough. But so... 
Yeah, it was actually a weird saw. I was just telling John that kind of some of the vintage stuff I took didn't really move at all. Um, it was mostly G.I. Joe and Marvel and He-Man and um, stuff like that that sold Power Rangers. It's, uh, it was interesting. I, that's why I'm not sure if I want to do another one because what I'm now, that's mo that was most of my um, modern stuff. Yeah. So I don't know if I'm going to do it again. I need to separate out, see what I'm going to do with all this and then go from there. So, oh, cool, Mikey. I hope the job's doing well. New apartment, everything. Wow, Code Monkey. Hey, hey, what's up, Catman? Scribbles, scribbles. Nice. You know, you just can't give away Playmate Star Trek stuff. Yeah, you can. You can give it to me. <laughs> I sent you all that. I know. <laughs> You're supposed to make a nice display out of all that. It's, it's coming sometime soon. My uh, my buddy who passed away, Lee, he bought all the figures and he had all of them on card. And then he bought them all again so he could get the, the trading card out of it or the pog that was out of it. And then he just had all these loose figures. So um, I told him that, you know, John was making this cool room and he was like, oh, well, he can have all those. And he just never brought them over to the house. And so, you know, Ashley. Hey, Ashley. Look at that. Sweet. Sweet Ashley. Ashley. Well, my comic book store was actually had a whole bunch of them for a dollar a piece and they sold okay. But even at a dollar, people weren't buying them. Duffman's here. Um, if you guys don't follow Ashley, please do. Uh, Awkward Ashley, yeah. she does movie, movie. Uh, reactions. Movie reactions, yeah. And Good she, stuff. Is, she is one of my favorite people on the internet. So, um, her latest one was... Uh, 13 going on 30 um, because she just turned 30 this last weekend. So got to watch that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. My, my comic book store had probably 40 or 50 bins uh, or lo long boxes full of comics for a dollar a piece. Now those, those sold pretty well for them, mm -hmm. but oh, that's sweet. Um, and of course, Ashley has a, a beautiful cat named Beans, and Beans is Beans is a is a chunky girl, but she's wonderful. Beans also, movie reactions are pretty good too. Yeah, yeah, she <laughs> often sits back in on her chair, and every once in a while, they'll look up and like, oh, it must be a really good movie if Beans is paying attention. Um, also, Ashley does uh, Twitter. Um, and, uh, our Twitch, I mean, uh, Twitch streams. And today at two, my time, um, she'll be live on Twitch. I don't know what, I think we're going to, uh, I think she's going to go back to playing the, that Spider-Man game. Oh um, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's a cool, fun game. I'm trying to talk her into Knights of the Old Republic because she just got an Xbox. So they didn't, they redo, Oh, but they didn't release them all for PlayStation and stuff. It's only Xbox, isn't it? Yeah. They remastered those games, didn't they? And I think, but um, I think um, they were I think it's still Xbox only or something. Yeah, they were going to remaster Knights of the Old Republic, and then they stopped. I don't know what happened. To oh, them. they didn't finish it. Oh, they okay. They didn't finish it. They put out a trailer for it where they'd redone the yeah. entire original trailer. And then um, they never. it never came out. Yeah. Um, and it just kind of well, disappeared. I don't know if it just, it yeah, maybe it'll, or, maybe it's down the road. I don't know. Maybe they had to pause. Yeah. 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 You never know. They might have gotten caught up in those other Star Wars games that are coming. And yeah. And said, ah, because well, they just it? released the remastered uh, Battlefront, the old Battlefront games. But I think yeah. that's all. I think that's for every, I think that's for every platform. You can get on Xbox, PlayStation, and. PC. 
Well, um, is there a DLC coming for Hell Divers, or are they just? Uh, no, today was an update for it. They had a new, so there's a new uh, war bond, a bunch of new weapons and armor. Um, when are the lizard people coming? They've changed the map so that you can see there's, they're both coming from the top now. Oh, so, okay. you know, the they're made room for when the predator people start coming. Hmm. Cool. It'll be soon. It'll be sometime this month that we get a third enemy coming in. Yeah. It's, you know, that's a fun game and I complain about it when I play because I need, there are two things that would fix that game for me. One would be a jump button. Yeah. And one would be a sprint button. Not a, not a dive button, a jump button. <laughs> you don't need a dive button. Diving makes them get to me faster. Yeah. You know. Um, also, it would help if I wouldn't remember the controls from Diablo 4 and then try and use them on Helldiver. Or or, or, or from... Uh, they could have at least made the controls the same as Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah. Because they're yeah, even different than that. Yeah. yeah. So it's like you get playing any other game and then you're like, oh, crap, this game's totally backwards. Mm-hmm. New Mego figures don't really buy much anymore. It is the same IPs. And as much as they do put out a lot of new stuff for like Jurassic Park, and there's been new Transformers recently. And John was just telling me he's seen a whole bunch of new Joes and a whole bunch of stuff like that. Yeah, um, the new Joes. I, I miss the days. I was when I was talking to Stu, the Universal Toy Collector. If you haven't seen that video, I was last week's yeah. guest. Um, pop over. It's, it's tagged in my community thing on YouTube. Um, I miss old IPs, just random weird IPs that would show up, you know, whether it was food fighters or barnyard commandos or attack of the killer tomato figures, yeah, visionaries, um, Arthur in, in what was, what was that one where the football players went back in time? Was it Arthur and the Knights of King Arthur's Court? Oh, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah, Just the football random players. Random IPs that would show up. And um, I, I miss that stuff because there isn't really anything like that anymore. Well, they do have things that don't last because that... Um... There was that blue and white space kid who had a motorcycle, and that thing only lasted maybe a year or two. Yeah. And then, then they recently had the one where the kid was in a red and yellow suit, and I think he also had a motorcycle. And his one of his fighting pals was like a furry dog or wolf beast, but that was humanoid. And then he mm -hmm. had like this big like ape-like thing that was with him. I don't remember that at all. That only lasted like a, it, it was, if, if it lasted a year, we were lucky. Cause I yeah. almost bought some of them. I was waiting for them to go on clearance. They looked pretty cool, but I had four I or know, five there's... figures. And then there was like the main character with a bike or something. Huh? That would be, I'm, I'm, I don't remember ever seeing that. It could have been that it came and gone so fast. I didn't notice it. Yeah. And then we had those little guys. There were those little figures that were like that big. Mm-hmm. And they were they they were like a constructs type set that made like a ship. Yeah, and those things came and went real fast. They didn't last long. Yeah, but they're not, you know, they're not Bucky O'Hare. They're not Pirates of Dark Water or yeah. stuff like that. It's no, you know, they're all new IPs. Kind of like Roblox and and yeah. you know, Minecraft toys and. Everything else seems to be like uh, kickstartered. Um, you know, those new Sector figures, the new Centurions yeah. figures, the new Biker Mice from Mars figures. Yeah, they're all kickstartered now. Well, and some of them aren't even the, the like the center. The Centurions technically are not Centurions. They're just guys that look like the centurions because well, they're get just the, exact in every way except the name except the name yeah because yeah. he couldn't get the centurion license but biker the mice centurions are but not the uh, not uh, well the centurions they tried but and then then if you're not going to do anything with the license why keep it yeah exactly but biker mice 
um that Nacelle actually bought. So the mm -hmm. Nacelle owns that. Um, well, and they're about to do Cowboys and Moo Mesa as well. Yep, yep, exactly. They got a whole. Where is that catalog? I got the catalog the other day. Oh yeah, cool. With all the new toys coming from Nacelle, toys and comics and everything. There's a whole. They got a whole plan. Cartoons even coming to Netflix. I'm going or was to do it, a, a video was it Amazon on it, Prime? But oh, no. this is the newest set yeah. I picked up. The honors. Look at that. So I, I'm gonna. I'll do a. I'm, I'm gonna do a video for it. I'm gonna open the package, but I'm not gonna take them out because they're they're tied in with that stupid wire, and yeah. I can never get the wire to set back in there properly when I take them out. So I'll take them out so people can see a good good representation of them. But and Plastic Meatball, who makes those, they've got another series of labyrinth figures coming. Oh, neat. Um. But Lurgo Fred, <laughs> that would be cool. Logan's run a rollerball. I mean, how expensive could the rollerball license be? <laughs> Gotta oh, remember, you. though, I it think is, Centurions uh, was Kenner, which means that they're probably Hasbro. My goon Hasbro shirt. doesn't get rid of their licenses, they keep them, you know. Even if well, gonna... you know, it's, and, and I understand that too, but then, you know, do something with it. Yeah. Like Don't mask, you... you know, they just sitting on mask. Yeah. They... Just sit on mask and then sue people who try and do something decent. They even made prototypes, which I remember seeing years ago, but. Mm -hmm. Just before COVID. They... Yeah. They before just... COVID were... mask was coming back because it was yep. part of that whole comic book universe that they were doing. Yep with Rom and Transformers and Joe and all that. Yep. I love that movie. It's one of my favorite. <sighs> Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas. <laughs> I'm hoping to get Ash to uh, Ashley to do some Christmas special. She does TV shows on Wednesdays now. And yesterday was, um, I think, episodes three and four of Ratchet, which is a prequel to um, um, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Oh, it's really? all about how Nurse Ratchet kind of became who she was. Oh. Um, I haven't gotten to watch any of it yet. I need to. I just, I've fallen behind. Um, but uh, I'm hoping to, to talk her into doing some Christmas specials on the Wednesdays. The old TV one she's never seen, like Rudolph and you yeah. know, Charlie Brown and Garfield and all that stuff. Even on in, um, in, how, in October, um, could do Halloween specials. Yep. So, um, but she generally does uploads of horror movies Monday, Wednesday, and Friday during October, uh, during Halloween. So we'll see. We'll talk her into it. But, oh, that would actually might actually like Hold Check the Night Stalker. Um, it's an early version, Ashley, if you're still on, it's an early version of the X Files in a way. Um, made oh. in the is it late seventies, I think. Did I never see this? How did I no, not see this? you've seen Cold Check the Night Stalker. I have to look it up. Um, it, it stars the dad from A Christmas Story, and um, oh yeah, I remember this. Yep, yep, yeah. Yep. And it's he's a news reporter who goes around the country investigating stuff. Nineteen seventy-five. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was kind of around there. I I've seen it, but I just don't. I guess I don't remember the name of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I remember as soon as I saw the uh, picture here, I remembered it. Yep. Oh, and it's got a great theme, and it was kind of around the same time of like you know when the Six Million Dollar Man was fighting Bigfoot and the Hardy Boys were yeah. on and all the. Apparently, you can of. watch it. You can watch it on Peacock for free. <clears throat> a lot of the episodes are on YouTube for free as well. But uh, that was a great, that was a really cool show. Very 70s. A lot of, uh, a lot of the younger people can't deal with old shows. They're too long. I liked the, um, back then, some of my favorite stuff was, I, I liked the, the Doctor Who when they would show, when I would find it. I liked, the, there was an old Hitchhiker's TV show and I loved that. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy TV show. 
Mm-hmm. I loved that thing. Like, there was some good TV back then that I remember as a kid just being like, and to me it was like I didn't. I guess as a kid that that young, I didn't realize things were on a schedule. So to mm. me it was like, oh, I found it. I found it. It's on here. You know, like yeah. every time there'd be an episode because I had no idea it was like actually the same day each day. You know, same time each day. Well, and you so know. I would just, and, uh, you know, the younger people today, they just would not be able to handle only being able to see one episode of a show. And then that was it. Yeah. You had to wait. And then or, you had to wait until yeah. summer and it might rerun in the summer for you if you were really nice. Yeah. But even then, like ABC would show movies then instead, or they'd have their big summer, you know, winds of war or war and remembrance or Shogun and that kind of stuff on, and they wouldn't rerun their good shows. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's such an interesting uh, how I was thinking about that, how how watching stuff has changed so radically in our time. You know, now you just sit down and oh, I, I hadn't seen that Night Stalker and you just sit down. You could watch all of them today. Yeah. You know, or like, beyond like having a uh, uh, like one of the DVD. series. I always loved was uh, Night Gallery. Nice. The um, oh come on, The Outer Limits. Oh yeah. I, I I liked stuff like um, Twilight Zone and things like that. And The Outer Limits, I always thought was even a little bit more. I guess they might have had more alien related shows in The Outer Limits and more mm-hmm. monster stuff than Radio. than say, you know. So, but. It wasn't until recently, I mean, like somewhere in the last five to eight years or whatever, when I when the streaming services became very much more popular, that I found it on one of the streaming services and was able to watch all those old Outer Limit shows from the 50s and 60s and stuff. And I can't believe how many of them I never saw. Yeah. There was a number of them that I was like, oh, I remember seeing this. Like, I must have watched it like 10 times over. But... There were certain episodes that I think went into heavy syndication. So I saw them over and over and over again as a kid. Mm. And then there were other episodes that I think, I don't think I ever saw. Like, I'm like, wouldn't the whole series go into syndication and they would have played it. But I you might've they... missed it that day. You might've yeah, missed it maybe that, that's it. That and, that one re-ran. Yeah. And then I would catch it back when they were playing it again or something, you know, mm. like, but that I think that was the same. Now. Uh, Wild Wild West was in syndication. I I would run across episodes. I'm like, how did I not see this episode? Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, but I mean, I guess it happened with a lot because I can remember as a kid, like GI Joe the cartoon. You know, that was in syndication. It was on every day after school, mm-hmm. and I can remember coming. Like, there was three or four guys at school that we would. As soon as school ended or even right before, we were jumping out the door and running to one of our houses. A lot of times it was my house because my dad wouldn't be home from work yet. And there was always food at my house. So we would grab like a bowl of cereal or there'd be like a $20 bill on the table and we'd order a pizza. You know mm. what I mean? So we would sit down and watch this the, after, the weekday afternoon cartoons and just stuff ourselves with all the food and there was but we would always laugh because i can't tell you how many times bazooka saw a sea serpent come up on gi joe and and it was more it was more than just like you know like a season of gi joe had like 50 episodes in it so you'd think that it would be 50 days before that would come back around but it wasn't sometimes we would we would swear we'd be there on like a Tuesday and we, we could, we could tell like the second the show started, we, you know, you could see the, the sand and the water out there and they kind of pan back to the beach and bazooka and quick kick and Alpine are on the beach. And it's like, Oh crap. It's bazooka saw a sea serpent again. And I swear like the next week on like a Thursday, we'd be home. We'd be, we'd all run home. We're like, it's going to be bazooka saw a sea serpent. And my friends would be like, no, 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 it can't be. We saw it last week. We got a long time before they repeat it. You know, nope. Sure enough. It'd be bazooka saw a sea serpent again. We're like freaking. <laughs> For me, it was uh, two, two episodes of transformers, which was the episode where, um, 
uh, Spike gets hurt in a battle or whatever, and they transfer his mind into a into oh, a, that's into right, Frankenstein monster, yeah, into thing. the robot, yep. And then it was the one with those little like electric uh, monsters, Krimzeek. Krimzeek. yeah, Krimzeek. <laughs> and those those two seem to run forever. <laughs> and, you know, and I thought the same thing about stuff like Hanna Barbera and like Ghost, uh, Space Ghost, and things like that. Yeah. Until I got older and realized there were only thirteen episodes, so no wonder oh, it so, seemed yeah. like it reran all the time because it did. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. why they started putting those together in in blocks of three, so that at least they'd have like forty five episodes to cycle through. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I. I um, you see that Transformers is coming to the theaters. I did. I have not uh, bought my tickets yet because the uh, theater I go to, uh, they say theirs is going on sale tomorrow. Okay. So it, I knew it was coming up soon. Yeah. But there's supposed to be a panel with a, a, a reading with uh, Frank Welker, Cullen, right? Peter, what is it? Peter Cullen? Peter Cullen, Frank Welker. Right? So Optimus Prime, Megatron, and a couple of other voice actors that are still alive. They're actually going to do a panel and table read um, that's going to fit. I don't know if they're going to do it before you watch the four episodes or if they're going to go after break it up or after or what. Yeah, yeah it'll so. definitely be after when um, because that's what they do with those. They'll show the, the thing and then whatever extra stuff is after the credits. Is after? Okay. Yeah. So, but yeah, I'll definitely be there because, of course, that's never been on the big screen. No, no, that's like so. it's, it's the actual TV show. Yeah, the first four yeah. episodes. I do not. The only small sort of stuff yeah. I have is I, I have a couple autographs and I have the movie and I have some trading cards. But I didn't I didn't buy any small soldiers. Banana splits, yeah. Banana splits. Oh, yeah. I remember those. Yep. One uh Sitter and, Sitter and Marty Croft, whoever's still alive, is coming to a show next month. And so I'm gonna go get some stuff autographed from him. I remember Gary Gnu. No good news is good good news. No good news is good to good news. That was the Great Space Coaster, right? Was yes. Gary Gnu on the Space Coaster? Gary Gnu on the Great Space Coaster. You know, and uh, now that HBO owns basically owns Sesame Street, you know, that's gone to all these weird green screen things now instead of actually being on set. <laughs> But uh, it would be, it would be a great NECA property. Uh, they've done, there's a couple of people who have done some stuff for it, but it's been 20 years yeah. since they've done anything for it. And actually, I think McFarlane did a couple, I think he did an HR Puff and stuff uh, figure. But, Was HR on Banana Splits? Uh, no, but it's a Sid and Marty oh, okay. Cross production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because that was back when they that. did Land of the Lost and yeah. stuff like that. I, I have Land of the Lost on DVD. I love that show. Yeah. That's one that I think they should have done better figures for. Yeah, they were toy biz, and so you could only do so much. And um, Like, they don't, but I mean, like, by the time they did them, the slee stacks didn't look like slee stacks. They were more mm. dinosaur looking creatures. You know or that, you know? Well, that's because the that first wave of figures was actually kind of based off the original show instead of the remake show. And so um and then they didn't do anything for the movie. Um, which probably they could have sold a little bit for. Uh the monkeys is is something that I think NECA should do. Um, people keep hounding Funko to make monkeys, and they they haven't ever made the monkeys. So really, I, they I, never made the monkeys. Nope, because people are like, you do the monkeys, and then you do the monkey mobile. You could do two sets of monkeys, one in their blue outfits or their red outfits, and then just one in normal clothes. But, um. I know people were hammering uh, Super 7 about maybe doing a wave of monkeys with their uh, all the rock and roll stuff they do. But I 
Kolchak would actually you could you'd only get one figure out of it, but he'd be it'd be a cool <laughs> figure. No, there's some like I think I was talking with Dino about this where like there's a certain like I I generally collect toys that have like a line to them. So, you know, mm-hmm. Flash Gordon, those five POA figures, there's there's like 10 or 12 of them. You know, there's a whole line. But I don't I don't generally collect the the toy lines that are just like one character, like say John Wick. You just got mm-hmm. a John Wick action figure. Like to me, I just don't need a John Wick action figure. But yet there's an old other side of collecting where every one of the figures they own is a one-off. Like they just own Robocop. They just own Ra- a figure of Rocky. They own John Wick. They own, you know, just the Lone Ranger. They own just uh, from They Live, Roddy Roddy Piper. You know what I mean? Like, so that's the whole. Like, I see that kind of stuff for a whole different collector, you know, like someone who would buy Bo and Luke Duke only or Starsky and Hutch only, you know. But otherwise, I don't see, like, like the fall guy, you know, they would just buy the fall guy, you know. It's like, yeah, where some of that stuff, I'm like, well, that's, you can't really make a toy line out of that. It's just the one character, you know what I mean? There's, you know, like, and I and I often think, like, a toy line also needs creatures and aliens and other stuff like it needs a it needs like a very at the very least it needs a group of good guys and a group of bad guys you know and when you look at things like fall guy or starsky and hutch it's like what are you gonna do you know or even john wick there there are three figures for fall guy plus his truck yeah, there or, are I mean, like, or three even figures like, for Starsky and Hutch. I mean, they've done. There's two figures for Chips, and they've done those. Yeah, the Dukes of Hazard really what, only has like three characters. <laughs> well, you got four, Boss, a little Roscoe. But I mean, like, like with the A team, they at least made like the whole A team, and then they they made like a series of bad guys, the bad yeah. guys, right? They they call them the bad guys, right, or something like that. <laughs> yeah, well, and that was Mego. So they were doing. Yeah. I mean, they did love boat figures. So yeah, exactly that I mean, too. Yeah, and Mash. Uh, Remember the Mash ones and yeah, the Mash figures. I mean, heck, when we were kids, you gave me one. They even made Wrangler figures. People wearing jeans. You know? Yeah, Wrangler. Those are cool. <laughs> I know you gave me one. It's awesome. I love it. But but yeah, but but I mean, when I see that with modern toys, I just kind of go like, why did you do that? You know. But yeah. well, I think it's for that that them other. For... Yeah, it's um, for the other collector that's not me, you know. Well, yeah, it's for everybody who's not you who wants a John Wick figure to start with exactly, or who yeah. does photography and so wants yeah. a John Wick figure for that or yeah. just needs a Bill and Ted. They don't need everybody else. Yep, you know, exactly. Or yeah. they just want an Elvira. Yeah, yeah, that too. You know, yeah, they yeah. Don't need, they just need, you know, Clark Griswold from Christmas Vacation. They don't need everybody else. Yep, that too. Yeah, that's another. And if good you one. can get them cheap, then, um, you know, a lot of that comes from an over an overarching Paramount license. Like when Funko suddenly had like Coming to America, Trading Places, all these Clue, all this stuff. It was because they picked up a master kind of master over license for for Paramount. And that suddenly they were had all this new stuff open that they could do. And, you know, Figure Toys Company was very cool because they did all those Mego like figures for Superpowers, Justice League, Scooby Doo, yeah. you know, uh, Johnny Quest, Space Ghost, all that stuff. But you know, those weren't in real stores, they were in collectible stores. And so that you, they didn't get a wide enough run. I mean, I just, I, I almost picked some up this weekend. They're basically, you know, uh, some more Batman 66 ones. Somebody found uh, $7 a piece, oh, but wow. they just go in a box and I don't, I'm trying not to do that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. John says that uh, it's not showing up in his YouTube um, stream info. So I don't know what I did put in a link to it, but of course, if you you're if you're on somewhere else, you have to click to it. 
Let me uh, see here. Yeah, there's a couple companies that did John Wick figures, but I think, and you know, John's point is taken that you know you want a villain to go with it. Yeah, for me, when I go to One Thousandth Ghost YouTube, it's the first thing that pops up is this live stream. Okay, that's weird. Anyway, and I'm and I'm on my personal account, not the. I checked with my personal right. account, not the. Well, hit a like button while you're there. Oh yeah, um, that's right. Okay. If everybody could make sure they do hit the like button, share the stream out if you can, make sure you sub, hit that bell, um, all the stuff everybody always uh, tells you to do. Excuse me. Yeah, and there's yeah, he's saying like Mayfix and SH yeah, figure Mayfix arts. And, and um, um I wouldn't be surprised if there's gonna be a hot toy or if there isn't. I think there already there. is a hot toy, yeah. Um and I mean he's a it's a pretty it's a popular character enough that it can stand on its own. Yeah. Um but you're right. Well that's kind of where like that's kind of what made me in the Indiana Jones figures from Kenner yeah. recently. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> because when they did Temple of Doom, they only did Indian short round. Yeah. And that was it. <coughs> I couldn't believe how many versions of Indiana Jones they did though. Well, like, I wanted all of them. Some people were saying, you know, they did a lot of figures in a short period of time. And I was just, and I missed half of them, but I saw Mike's pile. He took a picture of them all and Michael did. And uh, I was like, Holy crap. There's that many different figures. Yeah, it was there's, just unbelievable. There's probably at least maybe 30. Yeah. It was crazy. 10 or, so, or more are, are Indies, but that's what I wanted. Yeah. I don't. I, I I did want like Molaram, and I did want a, a thuggy guard from Temple of Doom. I wanted a, a a Scott. You know, I wanted I wanted that stuff, kind of like what they did for Raiders, except I wanted it for Temple of Doom. And they didn't. They in my mind, they didn't do enough for Temple of Doom. And of no, course, no, they, they did didn't. nothing new for Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. So there's a whole movie missing. I mean, you yeah. could have made an, an an older indie, and I know hey, people hate him, but a new mutt figure would yeah. have worked. Um, maybe that little that that um, that that little um, like Incan guys from the end of the movie that would have been cool. But yeah, see, I do knew there would be. I'm still a movie behind on on John Wick. I, I need that. Mm. Yeah, and there's no Indy Four version. No, um, yeah. You could have done an older Marion and him and his buddy who who. Uh, turns on him and the Russian girl. You you do four or five figures from right? that movie. Yeah. And I didn't necessarily I, it would have been cool to have had them in um three and three quarter inch. I wish they would have done three and three quarter inch figures for um Dial of Destiny as well. But you know see there's a playset. You just need to make a new an old refrigerator for him. And then off to the side is the prairie dog sticking his head up. Do you have the Slee Stack soda can? No. You didn't get the Slee Stack soda? Uh-uh. I, uh, I haven't bought a new Funko soda in a while. But um, I probably would have if I'd have seen it. But also yeah. almost nobody around here carries them anymore. And so you have to go to like uh, either Hot Topic or Lunchbox to get them around here. Um, but if I'd have seen them, I, yeah, I'd have bought one just because it's old. But that's, <laughs> ah, that's true. Put together, that'd be funny. But, you know, and then and, and that, uh, you know, that goes into just, they pushed the line out so fast because 
really after that, that's the last Indiana Jones project we're going to see. Um, I still think it would do fine as an animated thing. Uh, not necessarily Clone Wars, but animated, animated. Yeah. But uh, I don't think Disney's going to put money into it. Um, Dial of Destiny taught them that, you know, it took too long and to get the movie out and it cost too much. So they're writing it off. Um, even at, at Disney World, they're shutting down the um, uh, Indiana Jones experience thing because they're going to do some refitting to it. I think they're going to make a ride. I heard there was actually going to be a ride. Well, they had talked about bringing that uh, Crystal Skull ride from um, <coughs> um, kind of mine car thing from, from Tokyo over. Yeah, I heard it was but a mine car. Uh, yeah, but... Over in, in Animal Kingdom is where they're putting the Indiana Jones ride, as we know hmm. it from Disneyland. And they're actually making the whole thing over there. So gotcha. now Indiana Jones will be in Hollywood Studios and in in uh, in uh, uh, Animal Kingdom. But I got to go back and get on the Tron ride. The Tron, I hear it's really good. Well, the Young Indiana Jones um, series was kind of expensive, but it was also where Lucas uh, developed his CGI for groups. Um, anytime you see like troops marching and stuff like that, that was him testing how to do some of the CGI stuff for the Phantom Menace that he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if the, if, if a new young Indiana Jones would work because we kind of, we already followed him from when he was like eight or nine to like 12. And then we followed him again until he was 20. I think yeah, it was. teenage in his late teens, yeah. yeah. Uh, just before he went to college, and then he, then he'd be meeting Marilyn, Marin and stuff. But an animated one, you could do almost anything with. If it wasn't live action, you could do any age, and you could start it out just like the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles did with with old Indy telling a story, and then you go into the story. And you could do like the Clone Wars does or two or three episodes that kind of link together. You yeah. could do that same thing. Um, you know, you get you get somebody good to kind of produce it. And um, I think it would do well. Um, I think there's room for more indie, but I think, like, I don't know. I feel like the problem with the last two movies were like, I mean, you yes, yes, you could make the argument that every Indiana Jones movie has had some kind of supernatural, mystical kind of thing with it, because mm -hmm. like the Ark of the Covenant at the end makes no sense that it would open up and dissolve people's faces. Yeah. You know what I mean? But so that's a supernatural element to it. But the, the Ark itself, I guess you could say is like a real historical artifact that you mm -hmm. could actually like go look for. Same well, with even in, in the movies has not been a real thing. I know, but the, the crystal skull was the crystal not skull the crystal real skull. Yes, but they're not like that. They well, weren't. They, they're the not Ark of the portrayed. Covenant or the Holy Grail or rocks. Well, with no, lines the on Holy Grail. India. The the Holy Grail was. If it's a cup, it probably would have been a a cup looking similar to the way it looked in the movie. But it did the, not the, give everlasting life. No, it probably wouldn't. That's the that's the supernatural angle. But yep. what I'm saying is the crystal skull they used in Crystal Skull was not the crystal skull they found. Like if they had actually used the real crystal skull, or I mean, not the, actually the real one. That's not like they're going to let them use it for a movie. But I mean, they made a mock-up of it that looked like a human skull and made it out to have some kind of little power at the end. Instead of bringing it into a whole alien race and alien skeletons and all that, 
Like that just really like sort of jumped the shark and not for me, not for me personally, but I'm saying that's why I think a lot of people didn't like the movie compared to say the first three. And I think they happened again with this latest one where, yeah, that device is a real thing that we dug up out of a shipwreck, but it's, they took it to time travel when it's really just a clock for looking at the stars and navigating and stuff. So it's okay, kind of so like is here are the adventures of Indiana Jones. This is somebody, uh, Patrick Shoemaker made this. That's I've cool. turned, I've turned the sound off so that I won't get hit for it, even though I probably still will. <laughs> is it, it's not really licensed though, is it? Uh, no. Where is, why won't this play? Weird. What? What is it doing? Well, your your screen is still loading, according to the stuff on the right. Now let's do this. We'll reload this here in a sec. Um. Well, yeah, but that's just how Indiana Jones is. Whether it's that, yeah, or it's the search for Atlantis, or the uh, uh, the Fountain of Youth, um, it's always it's always something supernatural. Yeah, but I just think that for certain people, they went too far on the last two, where in the, the first three, it there was supernatural elements, but it was a bit more grounded in reality, I guess. I don't know. Where the, the last two, like, totally took it out of reality. It's all supernatural. You know what I mean? Okay, let's, I'll try this again. And I'm not saying like that's how I feel. I think I'm just saying because I enjoyed all five movies. I think they're all great. And I want to continue with indie. But I'm just saying that I know some people who've said to me, you know, or or I can understand how they can feel that way. Like that the last I two just went way too far. Connections between like um ancient aliens and the crystal skull. Um, yeah, basically, you know, that's what they were, that's what they were going yeah. for. That's not what I want. Um, that one, um, you know, and and when we were in school, we were watching stuff like Chariots of the Gods, yeah, and stuff like that in school, yeah. And so, you know, we get that kind of stuff. And there's only been what 15 seasons. Of ancient aliens, <laughs> I think they're at twenty now. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, plus there was uh, there yeah. was a book, Indiana Jones and the and the, uh, Roswell something, Indiana Jones and the Roswell or something. But you know, um, well, and 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 Jonathan's right. Time travel always seems to be a step too far, but it didn't didn't stop Marvel. Yeah, you know. I, or Superman one, um, you know, time travel, they're always like, you, you need to explain it somehow. Um, but, and that might've been just, they just saw too, too, like you said, it was just a step too far. Um, okay. Let's go back over here. Present share screen. Uh, and no, not me. I liked them all. I I want to keep going with Indy. I think I and even if even if uh, even if Harrison Ford isn't in the movies, I think they should keep going with Indiana Jones. Yeah. Like I don't. I guess I'm one of those people that I don't. I don't care if they recast. Him. Like if he's if they want to do stories about Indy when he's in his twenties and thirties, and they get a new actor. Like to me, that doesn't bother me. I, I, in in any franchise, they could do it with Star Wars. Okay, they could cast a new Luke, again. Han, and Leia, and it wouldn't bother me. You know. Well, we can hear it. Uh oh, we yeah. Can hear it. Screw it. I turned the the volume on. Yeah, this is already good. <laughs> Thank you. 
Very kind of uh, dark crystal and yeah, black yeah. Uh, cauldron here. Yeah. He dissolved. <laughs> now, see, wouldn't that work? Yeah, totally. And and you could do any any screen. Uh, Any time you do young indie, older indie, we know yeah. that he is, um, he's at least around until 1992. So, you know, I uh, know they should not. I would never watch anything with that kid in it again. <laughs> he is a horrible actor to start with. They should get the guy from, um, was it Emily or something like that who played Harrison Ford as a younger person in that movie and was a perfect character and did a perfect imitation of his voice. Now there's plenty of people that can do his voice really well, in, including Mark Hamill. So they could have anybody come back and do his voice in an animated. Oh yeah. One. Yeah. The animated one. Yeah. You know. Well, Trek and, Ta and Terminator, Terminator is based on time travel and Trek has basically done time travel enough that it, you know, it works. Um, when they started talking time travel in and did it in Star Wars, people said, no, Star Wars shouldn't have time travel in it. Um, but yeah, yeah, Jonathan's with me. But um, I mean, and maybe it was just how he was directed. That could be yeah. every, that they had to refilm everything. But I still think he was a bad choice uh, for that. Um, I enjoyed the movie. I don't mind it. I like Solo. And the more I watch Solo, the more I like it. I still don't like him. Yeah, See, I don't mind. Not Han Solo. You know, I mean, maybe something would have happened in Solo 2 or whatever that made him more... I don't know. Gruff isn't the right word, but more roguish you know um he was just a giant you know golden retriever in solo you know wandering <laughs> around um but you know maybe kira uh turning on him and all that stuff would make would do something yeah i, I always thought that the end of the movie is what made him you know the han that shoots first because mm -hmm. he uh shot his friend because he yep. knew he would betray him, you know? Well, and we don't actually know what happened after that with the whole, with the, the Black Sun and all that other stuff. Yeah. With Darth Maul and all that. We know where Maul ends up, and we kind of know what happens to Kira because of the comics. Yeah. But we don't really know how Han dealt with all that. Because by the time of the Empire Strikes Back, when Kira kind of comes back into his life, he's frozen in carbonite. So he doesn't yeah. even know all the stuff that happened in those comics. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I, I That's where I think animated Star Wars does well. Because like this, this new Tales of the Jedi or whatever, Tales of whatever is coming out, is going to fill in information we kind of needed to understand things going on in Ahsoka and um, Mandalorian. You know, now we're going to have this whole backstory of how she came to be, why she is the way she is, why she turned herself over to Thrawn. And it, it's it's like they go backwards and fill in holes. Yeah. And it's instead of giving us like, I don't know, before Rogue One came out, we should have already known those characters for some reason. Yeah. Um, there could have been a couple prequel books ish for him uh, to tell us about them. Now I wouldn't have read them because I don't believe in doing homework to watch star Wars, <laughs> but yeah. then after the movie comes out, suddenly there's these couple books that are like, Oh, this is why you should care about these people. And then suddenly, you know, five, six years later we have, Oh, here's why you should care about Andor. Well, yeah. I, I, 
I don't care about Andor because he's dead. And I don't even care about him in his own show because he's boring. Oh, I um, loved that show. No, hated him, loved everything else about the show. Oh. Huh. Uh, I love the political intrigue of setting up the Republic. I love the little spy stuff going on. Um, I really liked once he got to prison and Andy Circus is there. He was great. But Andor, the show just happens to Andor. He doesn't <laughs> yeah. actually, he's not the catalyst for almost anything yeah. happening. Yeah. Um, even the well, stuff that's why I always, it, that's why I think like a lot of these shows are titled wrong. Yeah. It, that's like even the Ahsoka show shouldn't have been titled Ahsoka. You know what I mean? It's, she's not the driving force behind that whole show, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I just don't think that these shows are named correctly. They're like, even the Obi-Wan show shouldn't have been named Obi-Wan. It should have been some heck that that show should have been called Leia more than anything, yeah. you know? <laughs> Baby Leia, you know, like... Well, Jonathan, what I do want to know about her is ancillary information about the destruction of the Darth Amir, about the witches, yeah, um, about what happened to what was left of them, what happened to Maul's people. Um, but I, I really wonder how much we can get in five or six minute snippets. You know, like they're well, I haven't seen the runtime on any of them yet. Because I mean, if it's like Tales of the Jedi, they're all going to be short. And yeah, but together you know, they're another forty-five minutes of information. Wasn't Tales of the Jedi just like twenty minutes long or something? I don't know. Maybe I'm well. There were misremembering stories go on, and each each story was like five or six minutes long. Yeah. And so between the two stories, you were given about. 20 ish new minutes about uh, Ahsoka and about 15 20 new minutes about Dooku's stuff. But yeah, they did, but I don't, I think sort they sort of went like quick by it went quick. Yeah, it's the same way that we really don't know what happened uh, to um, uh, Mandalore. We've, we've seen bits and pieces of it, and then we saw a little bit more in Ahsoka about the siege of, of Mandalore and stuff, and then we got a little bit, even a little bit more in Season 7 of the Clone Wars. Um, it would still be, I, I, I haven't, I'm about five episodes behind, I think, in Bad Batch, the new season of Bad Batch. But I, I it's it still goes back to filling in information be, backwards. Like the Clone Wars makes episode three so much better in the long run. Yeah, yeah. But because something about. Actually... Ouch. Go finish your thoughts. Sorry. Um, something about how Anakin, everybody was like, oh, Anakin falls too quickly. Well, yeah, but now you see that he'd been at war for four years and had to make a lot of really poor choices. Yeah, yeah. But um, Mandalore has recently been something that kind of bothers me, like especially having it show up in the Mandalorian and Ahsoka and all this stuff that happens after Return of the Jedi, because I distinctly remember George and everyone saying that Boba Fett was unique. Boba Fett... The reason he had the armor was that he was it was armor from a by from a like a group of race of people that were no more. Like Mandalore had by the time of Empire Strikes Back, when we see Boba Fett, Mandalore was gone. Like the planet itself was destroyed. You know, almost like Alderaan is gone. You know what I mean? Like it's completely obliterated. It doesn't exist anymore. And now all of a sudden like that lore doesn't even exist anymore. And now that wasn't lore. That's George talking in an interview. You know what That's I mean? Not well, lore. Uh, if you want to go back to a, a Rolling it was Stone in, article that it was said in, that there are 12, uh, 12, George has 12 movies in mind for Star Wars. Yeah. Then suddenly that's canon and, and we need three more movies from George. But I mean, it wasn't just in like 
an interview or something. I mean, it was in Bantha Tracks. It was in all the all that, the uh, not, magazines. That's not, a, and that's not anything. It was in it was in books back then, like Tales of the Bounty Hunters and stuff. You know, it was in it like was all kinds of stuff in, back in then. Some of the and the uh, in some of the tale stuff, but they never said that Mandalore was destroyed. <laughs> You know, it it, it made it <clears throat> seem like he was the, like he was, that's it. You know what I mean? Like, and yeah, that he and, then, and he himself wasn't necessarily a Mandalorian. He was using armor from a race of beings that were just totally wiped out, and the Empire wiped him out. You know what I mean? It wasn't it wasn't like they were wiped out thousands of years ago. It was like ten years ago. You know what I mean? Twenty years ago. You know, like the Empire basically wiped the finished wiping them out. You know. And so I just, I don't know. I just felt like because of the popularity of Mandalorians, Disney and popularity them just kind of went, Fett. yeah, they just kind of went, okay, well, these guys never got wiped out and they're just, you know. <laughs> well, they were a hidden race. I mean, when we have these conversations and you say stuff like that, it makes me think, yeah, but there wasn't money in it then. <laughs> yeah, it, it exactly. 30 years ago. Yeah. Then Naboo didn't exist then, except in a little, a, a small thing in Journal of the Wills. I mean, you can't can't compare things in articles and in books that are thirty years old that aren't canon anymore, and then say, "Well, yeah, but like, no, no, none of that exists." They expanded the universe, and that's why. You have Mandalore. People love Mandalorians. Look at everybody who goes to like Dragon Con and yeah. dresses like that. Yeah. Um, look at the 501st. You know, I particularly don't like the 501st. They do great work, but they're teaching kids that the stormtroopers and stuff are cool, and they're not. They're genocidal aesthetic <laughs> members. Yeah, yeah. Who kill everybody, you know. They're horrible shots, but suddenly you are able to kill everybody. Meanwhile, the guys who dress in rebel outfits and stuff are like, oh, they're stupid. Huh. <laughs> you know, it, the Empire has cool gear. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, you can't do that. But I mean, think of all the back information, even making Luke and Leia brother and sister and Anakin's kids. That wasn't George's original intent. If you read the original you know, screenplay for it, that's not even even remotely close. Look how much it changed just making Kenobi into Kenobi. Yeah. You know, and you look at the old Ralph McQuarrie stuff and you're like, well, that's the original version of Star Wars. And then George changed it. Well, it would have been a girl. Would have been a girl. By, yeah. Yeah. And, it wasn't and, even going to be. And then he split the girl into Luke and Han. Really? Yeah. It was one girl with a with an alien sidekick and two droids. Well, and, and then this, he split the girl. He split the girl into Luke and Han. This doesn't bother me as much as it used to, um, because not every Jedi. This this never bothered me because of the the line where he said Vader helped hunt down and destroy the Jedi Knights. So I knew that a number of them survived Order sixty six because. Vader still has to hunt down and destroy a whole lot of the Jedi Knights himself. Well, and know? that's what several of the video games are based on and things like that too. That yeah. didn't, that did, that used to bother me just because it was like, well, then there are these Jedi everywhere. Why don't they make, why don't, why did they all decide to just hide and not come and help the Republic and fight? But as you, as we see more and more, then you're like, well, yeah, because they, you know, look how, look at Obi Wan in Obi Wan. He has PTSD, clearly. Yeah. You know, he had to cut down his best friend who he doesn't even know is still alive. He's cut himself off from the force as much as he can. And he just kind of just wants to go to work chopping up his whatever desert whales, whatever they were eating, <laughs> and uh, go home. And that seems to be a lot of them. Now, it'll be interesting to see more going on. Barris and the stuff going on with Barris will be interesting. Yeah. To see if she survives through and shows up in Ahsoka Season 2. Is that what she's been I'm, prepped for? I'm I'm really interested in the Barris thing. 
but I'll, I'll get to that in a second because what I what I've often said is I know they've covered it in comics. I know we've seen some of it, like sort of in live action with the Inquisitors, and some of it sort of in cartoons with the Inquisitors. But I still want to see, like I would love it if they do a a series like a television show where it's it is on Darth Vader. The show is about Darth Vader. And it's about Darth Vader hunting down and destroying the Jedi Knights. Yeah, you can have one or two Inquisitors in it also, but I want to see I want to see like a two or three episode arc of Vader hunting down an Aqualish like like uh, Aqualish guy, and at the end of the, that arc, he kills that Jedi, and uh-huh. then he goes after then he get, finds clues that there's another Jedi that's hiding out over here. And he goes after that Jedi, and at the end of that arc, he kills that Jedi. And then, like, you have another one that he finds, and at the end of that two or three episode arc, he kills that Jedi. And just over and over, like, he's tracking down with the use of Inquisitors and other, and like smugglers and underground things. Like, he's going, you could do it like, you know, four or five different Jedi in a whole series that he hunts down and destroys and kills. And see Vader's power, see Vader in action. Well, they've done you know? that in a couple of the a couple books, and in yeah, I know they've done the, it. That's what I'm the saying. They've done Vader it in, series of comics. Which yeah, I they've done it in comics an and books, but I don't want to see it in comics and books and animation. I want to see live action. No, you know, fuck I want to see a, a real live action show. is expensive. You know, live action takes too long. I would prefer most things to be animated if I had my choice. If you're not going to use. Like then you're just casting all kinds of people. Then you have too many voices involved. An animated series of that Vader would be cool because he could do things that you can't, that would just take too much time for ILM to do. They'll they'll use the volume, and people will complain about them using the volume. <laughs> and it would just be easier to do it as a, a as a limited tales of the Sith or whatever. Yeah, you know, tales of Darth Vader. Start it in that and see how it start it in that and see how it goes then. Yeah. Yeah. But I um, would I would watch the live action version. I'm just saying that it's we've seen it takes it's too expensive. And with the amount of money they're wasting on Marvel and Star Wars shows, um, and not getting any money back from it. Yeah. Which is exactly why they started releasing the Marvel shows and Andor and that stuff out on DVD and Blu-ray because there was no profit stream for it. And now there's a profit stream for it. Yeah. You know. And uh, and with Barris, like, I'm, I'm really fascinated with this because I – either I totally misunderstood – well, not just me, but, like, there were two guys in Seattle that my friends Derek and Daryl – the three of us would get together every time a new episode of Clone Wars came out and we would watch it. And then that moved on into Rebels when Rebels started coming out. And we would get together every week. We, we might not have watched it the day it was released, but since it went to, you know, like you could record it and watch it later, you know, we would sometimes record them and watch them when we all got together. But we did get together at least once a week and watch these shows together. And I can remember discussing things about like when Barris left the order and all of us agreed that she didn't really leave because she was becoming a dark side. She left. I mean, they clearly say it in the episode. She's like, don't you, you know, she says something to Ahsoka or someone don't, haven't you ever thought that we're fighting on the wrong side? The Republic is going down a dark path. The Jedi are, are falling to evil, you know, they're not living up to what the Jedi should live up to. Mm -hmm. And that's why she did what she did. And yeah, it blew, she blew up people and did that. But like, you could argue that that's what the rebels were doing against the empire. So, you know what I mean? So there's, they killed several million people in one. (laughs) Yeah. So, but, and then eventually Ahsoka herself leaves the Jedi order Maybe not for exactly the same reasons, but it's it's similar. You know what I mean. And even Padme well, and at one point. Way, that's been building since the Phantom Menace. 
Yeah. Even Qui-Gon talks about that. Exactly. Like, and and Padme said the same thing to Anakin at one point. Mm -hmm. She says, have you ever thought we're on the wrong side? You know? So and, and that also, doesn't... Uh, uh, Count Dooku. Before yeah, he but, got pulled to the dark side. But Dooku was... actually did pull to the dark side. Yeah, yeah. He did eventually. Not initially. Initially, no, he was not yeah. on the dark side. He was just not for a war with the people called the Separatists, which now... I like in the Bad Batch how they're actually showing that the Separatists had a good point. Yeah, yeah. That the the empire the the Republic was too big and it was overstepping its bounds. And you know, the other thing I like about the Bad Batch is it shows it shows the darkness of the Empire. Yeah. Instead of just being like Rome, and they would come in, they conquer you, and then as long as you paid your taxes or whatever, they pretty much left you alone. The empire is in your business every day. They're in your face. They're, you know, propaganda is everywhere. They're, they're, they're yeah. taxing you to death. They're putting, you know, making you carry social security cards and ID cards. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, they're really, they're, they, they had a good point. But um, my, but my thing with Barris is that in these trailers, they make it look like Barris is willingly becoming a sister of the Inquisitors and fully giving in to the dark side and joining the Empire. So my question is, what what brings her to that point? If that's what if what we see in the trailer is what's really happening, or like, because because to me it's like she wasn't turning to the dark side. She was going against the evil that she thought the Republic and the Jedi were becoming. So if she was against evil, why would she join the evil side? Do you know what I mean? So Boy, and, what, and I'm, what I'm hopefully what I'm we'll curious see what about her is before, yeah. between her arrest and when you know they come when Grievous comes to get her. Yeah, did or something they, happen comes to get her. that did something happen that pushes her over to turn fully dark side and go in with the empire? Or is she doing it just to get close to Vader because she knows, you know, that's the only way to get to him in her mind. Like this is the path well, she, to get she to know him. who Vader is. I mean, she might as well kill the grand inquisitor. Well, that or that too. You know what I mean? Like she could just see these people as in power for the dark side and just be like, the only way to really get to them is to play along. And then when they least expect it, I can turn, you know, try to yeah. get them or something, you know, well, and which of course that, we know will fail. Possibility but... of, of what they were, what they're doing. Um, and we'll have to wait or, or did she I... just, yeah. Or did something really bad happen? And she really is just turning to the dark side and they're setting this up for something in the future. You know what well, I mean? Like with, and then if, if she is being set up to be an Ahsoka too, then you have her, yeah with Ahsoka who has now come back to the light as it were. Yeah. And maybe she can help Barris come back too. Yeah. Cause um, they were best good friends in those. They were good friends. So we don't know yeah. because of the same issues you have with other things. We don't know what happened to the Inquisitors, you know, after say return of the Jedi. Yeah. Were there any still around Were they just kind of going off doing their own stuff? Um, you know, now we see the with um what what was that guy's name, Galen or no, the people from Ahsoka. Yeah. And uh, we don't there's, there's little and groups of people going off on their Balin, going off yeah. on their own doing stuff. Yeah. And Balin was a Jedi or at least a Padwan at some point, but nobody seems to have a problem with him surviving Order 66. You know, there were Jedi all over the uh, the galaxy, I would assume, that did not have troops under their leadership in order to be caught up in Order 66. They would just have found out about it and then went into hiding. Yeah. But, you know, um, Jonathan's point of everybody's a Jedi, um, I've maintained that everybody has always, always been Force-sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, and it, we see like in the like I know you haven't watched the Bad Batch, but in the Bad Batch they got a whole group of kids that they're testing their metachlorian counts on and trying yeah. to clone with them, you know. And it's like 
what, my, what one of my questions has always been like, so if you don't have, like if you live in a world where there's no Jedi and there's no Sith, mm -hmm. but you're force sensitive, can't you learn yourself like how to do stuff? Well, you would like teach if you some stuff. I mean, you could <laughs> if, if you transferred that to say Earth, and you have say a, a group of like-minded people who seem to be connected to nature or something like that, and they can kind of heal or something. You might call those people druids, or you might call them a witch doctor, or you yeah. might call them a shaman. Yeah, who seem to be connected to a greater power that you don't understand and you don't feel you have um you know it's, it's but i'm still... just thinking like if i were a kid of like say 10 years old and i realized that i could pick up that cup of water from the kitchen and float it towards my hand well, i would not stop doing that just because i'm you know what i mean i would do well, that my whole life up being, you, you know? might end up being some sort of of dictator let's say you do figure out that you seem to be able to get your way with people um, to make them do things yeah. that they might not want to do, then you'd concentrate on that. But if you're 10 and you, you wouldn't accidentally make a rock come to you say in a moment of, of fear or something, you push somebody away or something that might click in your head. Then you might work on it and you could teach yourself yeah. to do things, but the Jedi may never find you. No, but what and I'm saying is if there, if there from, is no Jedi, I'm saying like after Return of the Jedi, like there is no Jedi. Well, no, you know after, what I mean. So, after Episode or like, Three, there are no yeah, Jedi. Like There's like no in Jedi Bad Batch, Temple Batch where they show these, people. like in Bad Batch where they show these kids that are forced that can move stuff with their mind and things. Like, I mean, if like say you, you there's got to be kids that haven't been captured by the Empire that are still out there. Like I guess just like they show in one of the episodes where. Cad Bane goes and finds a fort sensitive kid, kidnaps him, and brings him to the Empire. Well, there's mm -hmm. got to be a lot more of them out there just sitting around moving cut moving stones and drinking glasses into their hands and going, This is pretty cool. You know what I mean? I don't know what it is because I the Jedi are gone. I don't even have a concept well, of Jedi anymore. I, you know, you can you can do something like you can mix Harry Potter and Star Wars at this point to say that somehow the Jedi the Jedi can sense things the same way that say the ministry of magic can tell that you've done a magic spell. And so that might tell them, say somebody like Hermione, who's a mudblood who might've accidentally done something. And there now Hogwarts or the ministry of magic looks at her and is like, she should come to Hogwarts because we can't have this random person who can do magic out in the world. And that's the same thing with the Jedi, I think, is that they somehow, like Cerebros, in the X. Yeah, but that's what they used to do. I'm saying, what would they do after? They don't do the anything now. They're dead. Yeah, but what I'm yeah. saying is that kid's not going to stop using the Force just because he doesn't have a teacher. I think he's going to teach himself how to use the Force. He can't teach himself. He doesn't know what it is. But if he knows he can move a rock or make a drink come to his hand, why would he stop doing it? You would do it your whole life. So? And you would get better at it so? as, you, as you get older. So? Yeah. So, so I mean, there's going to be rocks and stuff. There's going to be thousands of force sensitive people out Probably there. Is what millions. I'm saying. Yeah. There are millions of people who have enough metachlorians in their blood to trigger force activity. Um, you know, it's it, the potentials in everybody, but doesn't have the drive. But so, that's what I'm saying that like someone like Balin showing up with a lightsaber doesn't necessarily, I mean, yeah, we know a little bit about Balin's backstory, but it doesn't mean that anyone we see in the future was a past Jedi or a previous Sith. Well, we know they Balin be was some, because he talks about, I know that we know his background, but I mean, well, we don't know. They his... could just. They could just be Padawan. Broom Boy. You know what I mean? Like, well, it's not Broom Boy because that's 50 years in the future. No, but what I'm saying is any time in the future when we see a person show up with a lightsaber, it could be like someone like Broom Boy who just knows he can move objects and do stuff and and made himself a lightsaber one day. He might not well, be I good at it, but I he doesn't have to be a former Jedi. 
I don't think you're going to see that because that's part of Jedi training. Broom Boy can't go to the internet and find out how to make a lightsaber. Why not? He knows because the story of Luke Skywalker. Held, as we already know from the, from the Clone Wars series, that information is held by the Jedi. And you have to go to a certain place which no longer exists in Broom Boy's time because it got blown up called Ilium to get a crystal. And then what's his name from Ahsoka would teach you how to build your, your saber. <laughs> now, Luke only knew how to build his own saber because he was dismantling an old one and he's a mechanic. Um, yeah, but I think some people would find old ones and there's thousands of them in the, in the round. Well, you could find old ones and use them, yeah. but much like Finn, you may not be able to use it well. Yeah, but I'm just saying that in it. I'm just saying that everybody you see with a lightsaber and using the Force doesn't necessarily have to be a former Jedi or a former Sith. No, they could just be some kid said, who learned how to use the Force. Everybody has Force abilities. They could just um, be some Han guy who learned how to use him, the Force. For uh, Han uses his for uh, flight. So does Poe. Yeah. Yeah, Poe does too. You you don't necessarily know you're tapping into the Force. You just are. And that's, you know, you're, that's, you know, possibly why Crosshairs is so good. The Bad Batch, the, the Bad Batch people, each one, like Hunter, how does he sense stuff like that? Yeah. That's force powers. They didn't know. really show him um, or test if any of them have any Mendochlorian, you know? Yeah, because they don't, they don't, they think that. You know, she's super special. Um, but yeah, it'd be I, I all that kind of stuff is very interesting just because it it fills in the world. And I wish that they do a little more outside known worlds. Like I'm I would like to see a whole series based on a completely different rebel cell that doesn't really interact that much with the normal cells that are kind of off on their own, kind of like Rebels started. And then yeah. Rebels overlapped into the Skywalker saga and all that stuff again. Um, what's up, Rick? Hey, Rick. Um, you know, and it would be, it'd be interesting. I don't know. The new, that new game looks interesting. The new series looks interesting. I'm still not sure about the new live act, the acolyte, um, because I don't care about that timeline. I don't, I don't care about pre Phantom Menace stuff, really. Um, I haven't yeah, read I'm any totally of those books, so I don't care at all. It's only a hundred years before, um, so it's not really that bad. And then once again, you have to explain well, if, sh if the acolyte really is. Sith, how come nobody in the Jedi Council knew about her or any of these events? You know, the more the more you go backwards and start trying to fill in, the more questions have, well, how come Yoda and Mace Windu and all those guys didn't know that, you know, they said the Sith hadn't been heard of in a thousand years. And not really, yeah. about 80 or 100 years ago, there's this one girl going around killing everybody who they apparently lied. used to be a Padawan. Who then went bad somehow? Because somebody on another stream, I don't know who it was, is what happened? To, what happens to Jedi's who flunk out of the academy? Yeah, you know they can't take away their. I mean, that'd be just like, you know, some guy goes through Marine training, does all the uh, basic training, all that stuff, knows how all this stuff works. And then does something like two months later and you just kick him out. And now he has all this knowledge and ability and nothing to do with it. And possibly anger. And that's how well, you they, get people like Reva. Yeah, they become mercenaries and work They come for, become mercenaries or they go to yeah. work for Black Rock or yeah. stuff like that. You know. I've often wondered that too about the Jedi. Like how can they... Like what does happen to someone they kick out because they're they're now trained in some of the Jedi ways to Jedi arts and then they they kick them out because they're like that just seems like the 
sure surefire way to make a whole bunch of dark side users running around. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and and John makes a good point. You know, Plagueis or his master would be around during this point. I think Plagueis would be himself would be, yeah. Because we're looking at when Sidious would have been Sidious would have joined him in probably I, I don't remember the book, how the book went, but I think in his early twenties. And the, out, out, no. It's your 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 bad person, adventure collects. He, he says they force them out. <laughs> yeah. Um. You know. Yeah. See, you know, suddenly like eight Jedi go missing and and dead, and they're like, ah, they'll come back later. I'm sure they're fine. I mean, like, Jedi have been known to cover stuff up because someone covered up the whole idea that, that who was Sypha Dias went to make a clone army, you know, and, and now well, yeah. they're leading it, they're leading it out to make us all believe it was Dooku that erased that whole thing before he left the order. But it's well, like, yeah, so it's Sidious, like Sidious was covering, ordered the whole thing. Yeah. And then, um, Sifidius figured out and went there, and then as it was, I'm assuming Django Fett killed him. Well, no, they uh, found him in that prison, or he was the Pike Planet. Remember, they found Sifidius in the yeah, Pike but he Planet. He was dead. No, he was an old guy, all crazy. He died during that arc. No, they found him in prison as an old guy. He was all crazy, like and thin, and like ah, ah I'm a, no, you know, that I guy. That book. Yeah, yeah. They found him still alive. He was just all crazy and nuts. Yeah. Eating flies and stuff. <laughs> well, and when are we going to get a payoff for all the Jedi that were frozen in those tubes? Yeah, that's right. In the man was that in that Obi was in Obi or Mandalorian or something? That was in yeah. the Obi Wan show. Yeah. I can't mix it up which show it was. But yeah. And that's that's a possibility too. That they just used his name. Yeah, but what I mean, what I'm basically saying is that a lot of the they have in the past done conspiracies and kept things from the council and everything. So this whole thing with this dark girl killing Jedi would have been kept from the council. You know what I mean? For all we know, Yoda and Dooku and them and Mace Windu never found out about it. You know what I mean? Whatever well, happens Yoda, in the show. As far as we know for timelines, only Yoda could be alive. Well, uh, Opa Rancis could still be alive. Pluku, not Pluku, um, the thin guy with the tall head, the st headstock dude. Yeah, His race lives for 300 years. The Oprah Rancis guy is like 500 years old. So, I mean, those guys are all still alive. Yaddles would probably still be there, you know. So, there's a number of people we see on the... If they're if they're still on the council. We don't even know what the council makeup is yeah, of this show. We don't know when, according to the... We fan, well, the council we see in Phantom Menace, we don't know when they took their seat on the council. Yeah, They very well could have just been teachers at that point, you know. Exactly. You can make a show figuring out what the hell went on during this time. But it would be, and, and actually I would kind of enjoy that kind of a mystery that doesn't completely have an ending. That maybe this is, Palpatine had a little help inside the council, not the council, but other Jedis he knew to help cover everything he was doing up. Yeah. Um. You know, we're not going to see him. None of this. Um, I, uh, I thought he was in a, between 50 and 60. And pre I, I would say I probably know. early 50s. Yeah. So, um, because what, that, what he said was that, um, what Ian said was that he, in once... 
how did he put that? He's I think he said something like once the the prequel trilogy was over, he was the exact age Palpatine was in Return of the Jedi. Because he was like in his 20s when he was in Return of the Jedi. Yeah. And, you know, he was the right age coming back. Oh, and there's nobody better at cutting a trailer than yeah. Lucasfilm. They, they always mislead you, too. They totally oh, yeah. mislead you. That's why I'm saying, like, this Barris trailer could be completely misleading. Or it might not be. I mean, either way, I'm interested in seeing how it turns out. But, yeah. um, And then the same with this Alkalite. Like, for all we know, maybe she never even comes in contact with some Jedi. I don't even know how it's going to that, work. That's a possibility. You know? I mean, we know she comes into contact. Well, someone comes into contact with that one girl yeah. from the Matrix. And but but I do have to say that like a hundred years, I always thought that the whole idea of the High Republic just being a few hundred years before um, Phantom Menace, I thought was a terrible timeline to do. And a lot of it was for those same reasons that you're bringing up, Chris, because I was like, that's still too close to Phantom Menace to where you're going to screw up half the shit we saw in the movies, you mm -hmm. know? And, okay. when, when it was and plus, they said it was going to be a thousand years before. Yeah. And plus, it's like, why would you pick that era? Like, who gives a crap about an era where the Jedi were at the top of their game? You know what I mean? Like, when there's no, when there's no adversary, you know, really. Yeah. I mean, there's, they have, they made up this guy, Marshawn Rowe and the Nihilists or whatever. But it's like the Nihil or whatever. But it's like, they're basically just mercenaries. And if mm -hmm. they really, really wanted to, you would get together like a hundred Jedi and show up and kill them all. Like, like their book's done. The era is finished, but they don't, they well, drag what, it on. They drag it on and make it stupid. Where it, I was like, if you go back like to the Jedi Sith Wars and have actually like hundreds of Sith against hundreds of Jedi and at the end of it show how the Sith basically ruined themselves because all of them were out for themselves, not mm -hmm. out for a collective whole. And at the end of it, you have Darth Bane left alone and Darth Bane says the rule of two, there can only be two from now on. You know what I mean? And start and lurk into the shadows and start this underground movement of, of, uh, of fight clubs, you know? Yeah. Or whatever of Sith that are hiding in the shadows like that would be the end of that story in a sense. To me, that's way more interesting than an era where there's no real adversary and all these Jedi. There's well, thousands and, of Jedi. And somebody who's read good. those books would have to tell us, but I would yeah. assume that they fight like like gangsters and pirates. Is they that do what basically do? yes, yes, that's what it is. Yeah, because the Nihil you know, are a bunch of gangsters in a sense. Yeah. yeah. And they're just an organized group of gangsters and mercenary, you know what I mean? So it's like they well, and that's is that really what the Jedi are for? No, I mean, yeah. How many Jedi's are there wandering around and what do they do with their lives? Yeah, they all just you know that's why I'm or... saying it's not a good period to talk about. And they've yeah. gone on for I don't know, 40 books now, you know. It's like, come on. Like I, I got the first two or three books. And then I stopped reading them because I was like, this is going nowhere. Yeah. And I stopped getting the comic books because I was like, this is going nowhere. I don't care a crap about any of these characters. In, but I am curious to see the Acolyte because I my preferred media is watching it on television, watching a film or a cartoon or a TV show. Yeah. So I, I am interested in seeing what they do with this TV show. And if it truly does wrap up some of the stuff I, I read in some of the books, but the books didn't captivate me enough to keep going with the whole series and neither did the comics. So be, because it's there, they don't have a real adversary, you yeah. know? Yeah. And I don't, I don't need the adversary to be another empire. No. I yeah. Don't, I don't need to see the empire rise and fall and the Republic rise and fall. And I don't, well, cause if that, because if that happens over and over and over again, then what's the point of the Skywalker saga? Exactly. Like that was supposed to be the most horrendous period in galactic history. And that's why people are talking about it thousands of years from now, 
they're, they're talking about a galaxy that something that happened in a galaxy a long time ago, far, far away, you know, yeah, because this was a unique event in galactic history. And well, if you're making way, Empire you know, rise and fall, then it's not a unique event anymore. Well, in the same way, we 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 talk about the rise and fall of Rome or the Battle of Troy and yeah. stuff like that is, you know, it's a momentous event or, you know, the way we fascinate on World War Two. Yeah. Um, and the beginnings and the causes and why people acted that way, you know, exactly. It's 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 a it's a scar that doesn't seem yeah. to heal in the galactic mind. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I don't know. Well, um, we'll have to see. I, I, I don't I don't know too much about the skeleton crew yet. I really haven't read into that. Um, have they even showed a trailer or anything? There's nothing for that. I don't out think yet, so. Right? I think they're going to wait until the acolyte comes out. Yeah. Um, because there's, remember, there's a. Um, or it special... could be next week. There's, I mean, we yeah, sure there's... have gotten a lot. We got an acolyte trailer, then we got a Tales of the Empire trailer. Now no. we got a new video game trailer. I was like, every two weeks we get a new Star Wars trailer for something. So well, like, who knows? Maybe in all, two weeks all the we'll movies get go back in the theaters in May. Yeah. Oh, they are bringing it back? Yeah. Like they're probably, actually showing it all nine movies. Uh, you can watch them in order if you want. It's wow. a 21 hour thing. Uh, they're also just bringing the Phantom Menace out uh, for an anniversary edition. And with the Phantom Menace is a special look at the Acolyte. So after the credits, there'll be this little thing. So I'm I'm getting tickets for it no matter what. Yeah, I'll probably the see the Phantom Menace again. at least. I wouldn't mind going to that again in the theater. But yeah. I, I I might go to one, three, four, five, and six again in the theater. Yeah, I'll have to see that. what's going on with our local theaters for that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to stay. I would. I don't think I could do all nine movies back to back. I just don't oh, no. think I could. No, no, no. There's that's too much. They're starting them like at eight o'clock one night, and it goes all the way through till the next evening. If I were in my twenties and thirties, I would have done it again. You know, because oh, yeah. I, I did that. I stayed for like eight showings in a row of the Phantom Menace when it first came out. the The only thing I've ever done like that was when they did uh, the first five Star Trek movies, and then had a preview for uh, Star Trek Six. Yeah, and we and those were all in order. And tell you what. Getting through one and five was hard. <laughs> yeah, one and sleep. Is five the one where they go to see God or whatever? Yeah, yeah that one that was hard. Yeah, that was tough. And, and one was so boring. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so really we'll, two, we'll, three, and four. That that two, three, and four are like a trilogy. They fit together real nice. It, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they bookend pretty well to each other. And then I've always been a huge fan of Star Trek Six because it does it's really undiscovered. Work. Is that Undiscovered Country? That's yeah. a good one. Yeah, that yeah, a that's a one. really good one. Yeah, but so we'll we'll see. But here we are, burning Rick's ears again. Yeah. <laughs> Although you know he's finally getting his hammerhead guy, so that's that's what matters. Yeah. Finally getting a Black Series hammerhead. We need a Kenner version, though. I do agree. But just to uh, just to annoy um, uh, Rick, it'll probably be a Bad Batch version. They'll say it's from Bad Batch, not from Episode Four. Oh yeah, okay. But um, well, this has been a lot of fun. I haven't gotten to talk Star Wars with anybody in ages because <laughs> not many people I know have kept going. Yeah, yeah. Um, they've kind of given up. And you're one of the few people I know who who does actually take in some of the ancillary stuff like comics and things. Um that I I've cut of. back on a lot of the Star Wars comics though. Like I'm not doing any of the ones where they're just like the Mandalorian and the Obi-Wan and the Book of mm -hmm. Boba Fett comics. Like they're essentially just putting in comic form the exact show we already watched so i'm like i know the whole story i don't need to read it read it in comic form yeah so i'm not i'm not getting any of those i'm not getting i'm not getting a lot of the one shots or the little like side things i'm just getting like the main like the main star wars title the darth vader title that keeps on going the dr yeah. afra you know but the only ones I'm, I'm still picking up are the action figure covers 
Yeah, unless they do an action figure cover, then I'm like, give me that. Yeah, but yeah. I've had to, I'm actually, <clears throat> that's what I'll be doing on Cat's streams probably Friday and Saturday is sorting comics. I've got tons of comics I haven't put in bags and boards oh, yet. Do you know how many, do you know how many I've got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then I know there's six up. Nine plus six, 15 boxes that are not bagged or boarded. Oh my goodness. They're just loose comics. I have a, and they're, and they're not, they're not even sorted. They're yeah, totally unsorted. Because well, I started I get my a box with what bags and boards I had left. And they're back in a box and they're not sorted either because I'm like, well, I might as well sort them all together yeah. instead of, you know, making a box for Star Wars. And because before it started, because before we did the remodel here in the condo where we put in all the windows, um, I was like reading them and just putting them in a box. And I said, well, I don't have the space or the room to actually sort them and put them. Plus, I can't get to some of the comic cabinets because it was behind stacks of boxes that I had because I took stuff down when we were doing the remodel mm. and it just kind of backed up and it's been backing up ever since I read them, put them in a box and I don't get to like sort them or bag them and board them. Cause I don't have the space. And uh, yeah, but I'm going up and not this. So I have one more week of work. No, I have three days of work, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday I go up to the house to take care of mom for a week. And I'm thinking that over this weekend and the, the next beginning of next week, I'm taking all the Lego down mm. because I've decided while I was looking at things and where stuff's going to go, I'm like, if I take all the Lego down, I can get the rest of the vintage up and clean up all this stuff that's here and like you know, but so then the lego has to all go up to the house so i have to figure out i think the bedroom is going to turn into a lego display room oh that'll be cool so the bedroom will be lego and then the tv room will be all the six inch stuff and transformers and dinosaurs and everything so i'm thinking about doing um, that with my bedroom shelves is turning those into legos because there's so much Lego I own that is in in, in the closet where that and that closet's going to be all GI Joe then, because that's the only way I think I can get all the GI Joe in is if that I have a walk-in closet that had like sliding doors and I've taken the doors off, so mm -hmm. now it's just like an extension of the room, and that whole thing is going to be all GI Joe, and I think that's the only way I can fit everything on display that's going to be GI Joe. Is to take over that whole room hmm. for GI Joe. That'd be cool. Now, are, are these are these built Legos or are they boxed? You're going to put up first? No, I mean everything. There's half that thing is all built Lego. Yeah, so I'm going to have to. That's what I'm. That's another thing I'm worried about is some of them are like those like Ninjago City things. The big, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? They're huge. And yeah, I have nowhere to put Riverdale. I. Because I, I don't have shelves that are big enough for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, But my worry is I'm going to have to I, – I don't want to take them apart as much as possible. So I'm going to try to take them downstairs and put them in the truck. Oh. And then I have to drive an hour and a half up north with them bouncing around. Like, are they just going to fall apart while I'm driving? You know what I mean? Am I just going to have a huge mess on my hands? Like, I, I would say I, put – Put put them in like a box, yeah. And then put bubble wrap on the bottom, and then just cover them slightly with bubble wrap. So when then they do do this, if yeah. any pieces come off, at least they're going to be right there. They'll be in there. They'll be in yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, oh, I, would, I, it would be cool to see a Playmobil collection out. Because I have a feeling that like my shuttle Tiderium. Like if I, I just put it in a box and drive it up there, a wing might fall off, but it's not going to yeah. like fall to pieces. But those city things like Ninjago city, like I could actually see that whole thing just with a vibration, just go. Yeah. You know, like it just collapse. Black you know? wants you to saran wrap them or super glue them. I'm not super gluing them. No, <laughs> but uh, yeah. 
Yeah, maybe wrapping them in saran wrap or something will just help. I don't know. Yeah. But, mm. uh, and then, you know, there's, I don't know, there's like three, I got like every Star Wars minifigure. There's like 300 different minifigures. And now, like, I, I don't, I, I, I want to be careful. I don't have every Star Wars minifigure, but what I mean is I have, I have a Luke Skywalker. I have a Jango Fett. Mm -hmm. I have a Boba Fett. But there's like 300 different characters or so that I have. Same with Harry Potter. There's like 200 different Harry Potter characters that I have. And, you know, in all those sets, I had the whole Hogwarts built with the, you know, the meeting hall, the tower, the clock thing. The, See, I did, you I know, did like, this with mine. Uh... Yeah. So they're like one's Potter, one Star, or a couple are Potter, a couple are Star Wars. That's what I'm thinking of doing. I I built these tiered things to like sort of stand them up at a at an on an angle, like so that the ones on top are, you know. But um, yeah. So I'm thinking for a lot of it, I'm just going to put a lot of the minifigures on display. But um, yeah. But there's still so much Lego I'm going to move up this week, plus that pile of boxes of. Like I've got more Transformers and GI Joe Classified and some Marvel over there. I think there's some wrestling figures there and Jurassic. So that whole stack's going in the truck too. I may have to make two trips during the week. I'm up there helping mom. I might mm. like one day like go real early in the morning, drive down, fill the truck again, drive back all the way up, you know, and before she gets up or something, you know. Yeah. She's having knee surgery next, so a week from today, yeah. And uh, she, of course, was like, I'll be fine. But I'm like, no, you're not going to be able to walk for like two days. Probably. Yeah, you're going to. Yeah. You might be so, able to hobble to the bathroom, but you're not going to stand up and cook yourself something decent. And... Yeah, exactly. You're not going to be able to get the mail. You're not going to go grocery shopping, you know. So I've said I would come up and I'll spend the, I'll spend the whole week and then, uh, um, and you know, hopefully by the, within a week she'll be able to get up and about a little bit more. Yeah. Plus she's got a um every day she gets a physical therapy person coming to the house to do about an hour's worth of. So we'll be able to talk to her and say like what is a realistic schedule, you know, and when when will she be? Because my aunt says that she was back on her feet within like four or five days. Yeah. Because she had she's had this done already, but. I mean, that's my aunt. My aunt is someone who's like, she doesn't, she will not rest and will not sit around. You know what I mean? Where my mom is like, if it hurts, I don't want to move. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. You know, like, like that. Yeah. That's how my back is now. Yeah. Well, John, it's been great talking to you. And uh, are you, you're still playing Hell Divers, of course. I'm going to play a little bit later today, actually, because new stuff came out today. Okay. And, uh, I might and eventually be on. Um, Ashley has her Twitch stream uh, for a couple hours uh, today. In about uh, starting 10 minutes? At, in about 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, anybody want to wants pop over? It's Awkward Ashley over on Twitter. Um, she's going to be playing Spider-Man. And the whole, the, there's probably about, oh, there's 100 or 200 people that tune in. And uh, they're all blast. They're very good people. Very funny. And she is, she's hilarious. So I know everybody would really enjoy it. I want to thank everybody who came in. Uh, honestly, this is the most people I think I've ever had on a live stream. Um, <laughs> so I, it's uh, may not be an every week thing, but maybe an every couple week thing. Um, try and get salacious on or maybe get Rick on and let's hear some crazy Rick theories. That always upset me so much. <laughs> I love Rick to death, but he, he knows he drives me crazy with his theories. Um, I'd love to get a, a, a Dino on. And I know I do these early in the day. So it's hard for the East Coast people uh, to do it or yeah, it'd be almost impossible for v Vern to come on because it's, you know, that'd be 11 o'clock in the morning his time. But I think Thursday is a good day just because it's not. Uh, when everybody's doing something, you know, Kat's yeah. got her streams on Friday and Saturday, and then there's Lego building Sunday, and there's model building Saturday, and and the the 
Shabby and the boys have their thing on Fridays and, you know, so there's and just, Wednesdays yeah, now. and Wednesdays. Yeah. So, but, um, I hope everybody has a great day and, um, hopefully all the crazy weather around the country has start, stopped for now. Everybody can have a good weekend and, uh, G force can get out and start mowing some lawns. I know yep. he's, he's, he's busy wanting to do that. So till next time, catch you guys on the flip side. See you guys. Stay awesome.